Hi, it's Paul Anderson. I'm a science educator and YouTuber, and like most people in America, I'm home, social distancing and uh, thinking about how I could help other people. And I know that there are a bunch of parents who have been thrust into the position of teacher uh, as their schools are closing and a lot of that education is shifting to the home. So I put together a survival guide for parents teaching science at home. And so the first thing you should know about teaching science at home is that kids love doing science. Lots of times when I go into schools and I say we're gonna do science, they just, they really get excited about that. And that's because kids love doing science, not necessarily learning or reading about science or writing about science, but know that science is a verb. And so it's a great way when you're home to get a break from a lot of the learning that we're doing and actually uh, doing some scientific inquiry. Uh, one thing that's neat about this is that you and your kids are intellectual equals. When you're teaching them to read or teaching them to do math, they're way lower than you are. And I remember as a parent just eventually getting bored <laughs> as your kids are reading Brown Bear, Brown Bear over and over and you're helping them read. Um, as you engage into scientific inquiry, you'll find that they have lived in the natural world and so they're at the same level as you are. And you'll find yourself falling in love with the science that you're doing as well. Also, you should know there's been a big shift in schools. What's important now in science is not so much what you learn, but the questions that you're able to ask as a student, and can you answer those questions? And so the requirements are pretty simple. You need a child, or multiple children is even better than that, um, an apartment, a home, and then basic supplies. The best place to do science in the home is in the kitchen. You want your kids to keep a notebook where they're writing down what they're observing, what questions they're having, what experiments they've done, and then you have to agree with each other other that you're not going to be googling the answer to questions. If you look up the answer, you're not doing science anymore. You're just looking up somebody else's science. And then the most important thing to start with is a phenomena. That's what you're going to figure out to define a phenomena. It's simply something that happens in the world. And so I've got five of these little cards and you'll notice at the top that there's a question and that's the question for you as the teacher. Um, your role is not to tell them the science, but to ask them questions so they can figure it out on their own. So let's start with a sample phenomena. This is one that works really well when you're just getting started. And so on this plate, I'm writing with a dry erase marker. Um, you wanna make sure that you use a real glazed plate. You don't wanna use a matte finish. Um, you also wanna make sure that the dry erase marker has time to dry. I don't know, 30 seconds, 60 seconds. And then I'm pouring water from the side. You can see that I'm pouring the water kind of slowly and I'm pouring it from the side and some of the letters start to float and some of the letters don't float. So this is an example of a phenomena. It's what you're gonna try to figure out. Now, I've got a link to this video. You can see it in the lower right corner. And so that's about 10 minutes of this. And so you would start with having your students not play, not doing investigating, but trying to figure out what's going on with this phenomena. And so as you do that, as you start to notice what's going on, you're entering into a cycle of inquiry. And this is where you start. So to get this ready, the first thing you want to do is make sure that this is going to work. So I would practice it the night before uh, just to make sure that when you show this to your kids, show them the video, it's actually going to work for you. It takes a little bit of trial and error to get it to work. Um, but then the first thing you do is give them a notebook. Uh, it's going to need five pages in the notebook. We could call this the mysterious floating letters. And what you want them to do is watch the video and then um, just start down writing down what they notice. Those are called their observations. And so it'll be hard for them to do this at the beginning, uh, but you just give them time and they'll start to observe things. And all of a sudden they'll start to notice things in the video that you didn't even notice. Now, if your kids can't write, then you could scribe some of the questions or just record what they're asking in a video. The key thing is to clearly get your observations out first. And then the next step is to come up with what questions do you have? What do you wonder about the phenomena? Just like observing, as students start to ask questions, they'll have a hard time coming up with more than one or two questions, but the longer you let the video play, the more of those questions they're gonna have. Now, as you go forward in inquiry, you might get other questions that pop up, and then you just turn back a couple of pages and then add those questions right here. Now, after you've kind of run out of questions, the next thing to do is to figure out what are you thinking? Uh, that's called an explanation in science. And the way you would push kids to that point is you just say, what do you think? Why do some of the letters float? Why don't some of the letters float? You would want them to explain what they think, but then you can see that there's a box here on the notebook. I would have them draw what they're thinking. So if they're younger, it could be draw a little uh, blue N and then a black N and show me why is the blue N floating and the black N not floating. 
It could be as simple as just drawing where the water is going. And then maybe as they go into middle, middle school, it could be draw the particles. And what do you think is happening with the particles in the plate and the particles in the letter? Again, you're not telling them the answer. You're just trying to get them to expose what they're thinking. Now, after they have a good explanation, the next step is to investigate. You want them to do some kind of an experiment to figure out if they're right or not. Um, in science, the most important thing when you're doing science is safety. So you want to make sure that the, the kids are writing down what's their material list, what will they need, what's their procedure. You don't just want to cut them loose in the kitchen and they're all of a sudden boiling water and doing all kinds of experiment. Uh, changes in temperature is actually a really cool thing that would impact this phenomena. But you want them to submit your materials list and procedure to you and then you approve it and then they can do the experiment. Next thing they're going to do is argue from evidence. What does that mean? It's just basically gathering a bunch of evidence and so you can tell me what I know. So when you're looking at an explanation, that's simply what do you think or we used to call that your uh, hypothesis or your explanatory hypothesis. But now once you're actually gathering a bunch of evidence, observations, measurements, graphs, now you, now you actually know something, you've learned something about the phenomena. But you can see this is a cycle. So that probably leads to more questions and more explanations and more investigations. And it just goes quickly around and around and around. Um, when I was playing around with this, I was trying uh, just rubbing alcohol and I got these weird weird circulation patterns and I'm really not sure exactly what's going on. I thought they were just heat, but it, I, I don't know what's going on here. Or there was another student that was playing around with it and got a letter that jumped off and just started moving around as if it's alive. Again, I, I'm not exactly sure what I think is going on here. I've got some ideas, but it shows you how a simple phenomena can lead to these extraordinary phenomena. And that's really what science is. It's asking questions, answering some of those questions, which lead to more questions. And so in review, where do you start? You start with a phenomena, something that we're going to try to figure out together. And then you're just asking your kids, what do you notice? This is one that I ordered off Amazon. It's the Jedi uh, Science Levitator, I think it's called. It wasn't that expensive. Um, and I just threw the, the um, explanation away. So they don't open up the box and see like, this is, this is it telling you how it works. You're gonna use science to figure out what's going on. So you're gonna figure out like, first of all, what do we notice? What questions might we have about that? Then a explanation, maybe draw a picture of this wand and this floating object and why they think it's floating. And then the next is how could we investigate that? What might we do to figure out if that's right or wrong? And you don't even have to have this in your home to do all these steps of the inquiry. Just planning that investigation and, and what's going on right here. And then finally coming up with an argument to show you uh, this is what I know at this point. So this is really what you should do with your kids. What's great about it is if you can teach them these five skills. Um, eventually they can go on their own and they'll entertain themselves. And so uh, I have a website called The Wonder of Science. I do this work with schools. And if you were to click on this button, uh, it shows you a bunch of phenomena. You could choose one that are appropriate to the grade of, of your children. I would love to hear if this is working. Uh, let me know in the comments below. Share it with other uh, uh, parents and other teachers. And uh, I hope that was helpful.